Hello, it's ESG up at the crack of dawn here with my co-host, Matt. We have some massive changes to Tarkov that we're going to explain to you. Welcome to the channel, guys. Let's get into it. Battlestate Games just dropped patch 14.6.0. And with that patch, we are now going to have access to the unheard edition. So that's the first notes that we're going to go through here. Matt, so what do you see in in this ed new edition of Escape from Tarkov. So the Unheard edition is gonna bring quite a few interesting changes to the game um, and, and perks for those that wanna spend the, the money on, on the upgrade um, or to buy it outright. You can either upgrade from EOD for $100 or if you don't have EOD, I believe it's $250. But so the, uh, the, the most interesting thing to me on the Unheard Edition is access to the PVE co-op mode with persistent progression. And uh, say that the progression is not going to reset with wipes. So I don't know if this is going to be it, it, uh, its own standalone thing or if it's going to be a, a straight up co-op mode with the regular game that you can play with your friends. I guess we'll have to, we'll have to take a look at it once this uh, upgrade's finished. The enhanced stash size is actually four squares larger than the standard EOD stash. The EODs is 10 by 68 and this one's going to give you 10 by 72. And if you had any of the uh, stash upgrade purchases that you can get separate on that website, it'll be 72 plus however many extra slots you got. You'll have increased starting level of character skills and we'll have to take a look in game to see what exactly that will come out to be and how many extra levels they'll give you. Um, the expanded pockets are kind of interesting. Um, I believe you'll have an extra row per, so you'd have two, or one by two slots and four of them, so you'll be able to fit whole magazines, standard size magazines in your pockets, kind of like the bosses do. Um, additional equipment and resources in the stash. So you get, a, you get the gamma container, which is what you get from EOD. If so, if you don't have EOD, this upgrade will get you the same gamma. You get a weapons case, lucky scav junk box, an ammo case, the SR2M submachine gun, you get an AK-105, an SVD, a, a, you get some, some 30 round mags for your SR2M, some 30 round mags for the uh, 545 AKs, SVD, you get some, you get 320 rounders, which aren't available immediately if you're on a new wipe with it, so, I mean, it's not a bad little upgrade. You get a bag, bag air, bag airly, <laughs> I don't know how to say that one, but the, the big heavy Russian uh, plate carrier, you get a TV-115, plate carrier start off with a million rubles which i believe is double the standard starting amount a thousand usd and 500 euros as well as it looks like you get some solid 762 by 54 r starting out with it you get 60 rounds of it which is going to be guaranteed to pen anything on a new wipe while you have those rounds still you get 90 rounds of bt the okay round and then uh bt 9 by 21 for that sr2m and That's then it the says bear below characters and then it's fairly similar. It looks like the the changes are you get an HK FN Scar SR25 MP7 FN Scar L AR10. No, that's just those are the mags for the the Scar Light and then the uh, SR25. You get the Ranger Green RBAV uh, plate carrier and then the uh, MBSS plate carrier, which I believe is the level three. USEC plate carrier that they added last wipe, as well as the same dollar amounts. Uh, for the starting ammo on USEC, you get 60 rounds of M80, 90 rounds of M856A1, and then 90 rounds of JSPSX. Which one would you rather take between the two based on the guns and the ammo? Either of them would be pretty good. I mean, they, they, you have good ammo for, for each. You get some better erg out of the US stuff. Not so much the Scarlight. Scarlight kind of sucks. I feel like it needs a buff, but the, uh, the SR25 is definitely more ergonomically sound than the SVD. Um, With lower pen back. on the M80s. So the increased starting level character skills, you'll get attention level three, hideout management level three, weapon maintenance three. Bolt action rifles three is big, so you don't have to grind the bolties um, in order to get the bolt action um, skills high enough for like psycho sniper or whatever the other tasks are that require you to run the bolt set cuts out a lot of the grinding away with bolties and you have pistols level three starting out so none of those are going to be game breaking the it's more of a quality of life thing especially on the bolt action thing because i hate running bolt actions when it doesn't make sense to that'll prevent that the access to co-op mode which you already have with eod but if you don't have eod that's going to give you access to it you get apparently a unique in-game armband the neat there's that radio the mark of the unheard 
Uh, they can be equipped in the special slot, so it's not going to be dropped when you die. And it gives you a 50% discount when using cash services in raids. So, like, if you're paying for the BTR or scav exfils, um, or anything else in raid that might cost money, it'll it'll obviously cut that in half. Um, insured equipment returns 30% faster, and then you start out with over six fence wrap scavs, and bosses won't shoot at you. Um, First, this says scavs won't shoot first at a range. Oh, so this, I don't, I don't know if that carries over to your PMC, but it looks like you'll be able to run up within 60 meters of scavs with that radio equipped, and they won't shoot at you first unless you shoot, shoot at them. I'm assuming that's PMC, because with six fence rep, they wouldn't shoot at you anyway, bosses included. So it'll help out with scav engagements as a PMC, based on what I'm seeing here, as well as just not having to grind away running scavs all the time to achieve the 6.0 or higher fence rep. They're making it easier for newer players, and there's less of a reason to run scavs. And then for future updates, the ability to build a unique zone in the hideout, whatever that's going to mean. And then a distress signal device. When the item's activated, produces a, a bright flash as well as a loud sound signal. Once activated, all players on your friends list will receive a notification that they can join your raid to help you. So I guess you can, you can call out an SOS, and if you have friends that are playing, they can join the raid that's in progress for you. And I'm assuming spawn somewhere near you, or just at least spawn on the same map while you hold tight and then call in some reinforcement. That could be a, an interesting dynamic that they're introducing there. So it seems like you could potentially exploit this based on your spawn, because you could have one player come in and get to a location and then spawn your buddies on in on top of you without we'll risking the whole that, party uh, if they spawn on you or at a normal spawn but it could be an interesting way to just bring in a really an even larger group potentially how to, however they implement it but if, if you already had a, a full squad coming in and then you activated your distress beacon and just held tight while however many friends joined in as well i don't i don't know it'll it'll really just depend on how they go higher than the standard amount of uh buddies that you can have in a raid or, or not um but it, it, it could be well to see how that one plays out it could be interesting so before there was a flare cartridge that made all scavs in the area friendly and i think even bosses and that was fairly rare i haven't even picked one up this wipe i forget which color the flare was but with this you could get into say on lighthouse into the water treatment plant and then have more timmies on your team join in safely so you could have them join into an area that's pretty hot or heavily contested and then from there work your way out of that area for free or you could clear an area out if your buddies are having problems with it spawn them in and then you can loot the area together after maybe a Chad, one of your friends that, that is a Chad, clears out the area and they won't risk their stuff. So again, this buffs Timmy players or newer players to the game who perhaps have a friend with a lot of hours in the game who's able to clear out an area. So that's quite interesting. You'll get a unique in-game ID, probably similar to how UD has that crown. I don't know, we'll, we'll see what that icon is going to be. Uh, unique melee weapon, which eh, it is what it is. Uh, I'll probably just sell it. Uh, unique in-game armband, increased mail retention. That we covered these. More slots on the flea market. See how many that will translate out to. But that's that could be that's a big money maker because every slot you get past two really exponentially grows the potential for selling stuff at, for profit once you hit the flea market. Increased fence standing we touched on. Additional main menu background. They'll have, it looks like just a cultist type background uh, based on what I've seen. Um, free access to all subsequent DLCs, whatever the season pass entails. And then early access to the early test server. And then they got rid of the transition from winter to spring. So I'm gonna, I'm assuming all the snow is gonna be gone whenever the update's done. Reduce the base inertia strength. Uh, we'll just have to mess around in game and see how that will translate, but it should make it so you feel less boaty, I'd assume. And this uh, is reduce... one people have been asking for inertia to be removed from the game. So they didn't remove it, but they nerfed inertia. Reduce the aim punch effect, which I think is that over travel that you see when you're 80 guessing sometimes where your your optic your sight will snap to where your center point of aim is but then also kind of shift past it so uh, they've reduced that to a certain degree we'll see how how much when you're getting hit shortly. when you're getting hit your reticle won't jump away as much so this to yeah, me then, this this is a balance of accuracy 
So you could just start hitting a guy anywhere on the body and they would start aim punching and they wouldn't be able to hit you as well. So if you're seen first and you're getting hit first, uh, there was in the past a massive bonus to ever, whoever starts hitting a player first. Reduce the blur effect when taking damage. Um, and then they reduce the camera shake while shooting. So it might make it easier to keep your rifle on target. Uh, slightly more than it already has been with this so i saw on pastilli's interview with nikita that pastilli asked for the reduced reduced blur effect when taking damage he asked this of nikita and nikita said we'll see so apparently nikita has caved into the community requests with a lot of these updates here and he's implemented changes right away to me, this is quite surprising that he that this came so early. All right, and the body hitbox penetration re rework. They changed the mechanics of how the body hitbox penetration works. Um, and now the round is always going to penetrate if the round's penetration power stat is higher than the hitbox penetration threshold, which the thresholds for the head, forearm, shoulder, calf, and thigh hitbox are now a value of 20. So any, any round with more than 20 pen is going to for sure penetrate through any of those body parts, but the damage and penetration power of the bullet will degrade when it penetrates the body hitbox. So the, the next hitbox will receive reduced damage. So this will probably prevent a lot of the one taps that we were seeing through an arm into that armpit area that's not armored um, in the thorax. Uh, unless you have some higher damage rounds like 762 by 51 or 762 by 54 r that already are, are, have enough to to one tap a uh, thorax. The extent of the damage reduction depends primarily on the round's penetration power stat. So if you have a high pen round tearing through any of those body parts, it's not going to receive as much of a degradation as as like uh, like any of the submachine gun rounds that have barely enough to get through, or pistol rounds that have barely enough to get through that 20, uh, 20 armor threshold that each of those body parts will have. And then, secondly, it depends on the caliber of the round and the body part's hitbox penetration threshold. The greater the penetration power stat and caliber of the round, the smaller the damage reduction. And then they reduce the armpit hitbox size, so it looks like the armors will have better coverage than they have had earlier this way. The armor penetration rework, and this, they'll probably have to redo all the ammo charts and everything coincide with this, but uh, well, I'm assuming they already have done that in-game with the new pen stats that you can see on each round, so we'll take a look when the update's done. But uh, if the round's penetration power stat is 15 more than the armor's effective durability, this will result in a guaranteed penetration. The following must be taken into account. Effective durability for intact armor is approximately equal to its armor class multiplied by 10. So like a level 4 armor will be approximately 40. Well, to get a guaranteed pen on level 4, you'll now need 55 pen based on how they worded that first bullet. Effective durability for damaged armor de decreases with the loss of durability points, which, I mean, they've already had that implemented. Uh, many cartridges have a small starting variation in armor penetration. I've already, I felt like that's already the case with how the, uh, how the ammo chart was. If it's not a, a six on the ammo chart or a very high pen chance, uh, probably won't see too much difference there, just depending on, it, it's going to be heavily dependent on that initial pen value that the, that the, the round, whatever round you're using has. Ammo penetration grades with loss of bullet velocity, which I'm pretty sure that was already implemented in the game. So the longer shots that you take two, three, four hundred 400 meters and beyond shooting at PMCs with armor, the chances of pen are gonna go down with distance and bullet velocity dropping. Ammo penetration may degrade after colliding with armor, body hitboxes, or obstacles. So if you're shooting through soft cover, at a guy with a round that should go through whatever body armor he has, you'll you'll see graded penetration for sure now. Um, whether it's hitting through other people, cover, or uh, other armors that are in the way. So this is interesting because the upper arms were basically, you're not going to be able to penetrate them whatsoever. And then they went back and now you're able to penetrate them. But now there's less of a chance if you pen the upper arms or arms in general, of that round going through and through the arms or through and through your buddy into you is that what i'm reading here yeah that's what that's how i'm looking at it if you get hit through the arm x number off of your arm your ammo pen and then if that went through the arm into the plate it's going to degrade even more but if you had enough pen then it, you'll have, it, it'll the math will be potentially pretty crazy if it's going through an arm through the plate through the soft armor and then back into the torso um it'll be degraded but 
the pen value starting out will still be heavily dependent on whether it's going to go through potentially all three or four of those hitboxes. So the upper arms were OP, then all of a sudden they were nerfed quite heavily, and now this is kind of like a balancing effect where there will still be a benefit to your arms blocking your body, but not as much. The next thing we're going to go over is let's take a look at M80s just at the current ammo charts and kind of see how these new armor penetration reworks will affect uh, that caliber of round in game. And we're just going to speculate as to how this will affect in game now with these changes. Okay, so you see the current ammo charts that have not been updated before you. And you see that a class four, a M80 hitting a class four armor will no longer pen 100% of the time because a class four armor will have an effective armor class of 40, but you need to hit 55 in order to get a guaranteed pen on a class four with an M80. Anything you're seeing here, Matt? Uh, I mean, the M62 tracers are going to be in the same boat as the M80s potentially, just based on how they worded it. So it looks like the M61s would be your only guaranteed pen on class four, M61 and, and M993. Un unless they go through and change damage and pen values at all on the bullets. Uh, but yeah, the, the, it's going to throw some wrenches into uh, the meta rounds to use for sure. If class four is going to be stopping M80s, M80 was the round to go with most, pretty much this whole wipe if you can get your hands on it because it will go through the class four guaranteed. And now that's definitely not going to be the case. Look on the right side, uh, right before the class one armor. So it shows the speed. So M993 is actually the fastest one. So it. It travels the fastest, the rightmost column before the classes. So that one's going 910 meters per second. It'll be dependent on the, the speed of the round for how much it's going to drop off it, combined over the over the distance. Um, but that's going to be the fastest round, actually, the M993. Where it's going to be lackluster, though, is the damage. Because M993 already does considerably less damage than M80s at 67 versus 80. So if you're but... looking at class 5 armor, which is typically the readily the best readily available armors with max traders, with M993, you're going to be able to pen on the first hit with a pen value of 70. Obviously, you're going to get less damage. And then with the bullet velocity being so high, it's gonna be effective out to higher ranges. So the better ammo that's not readily available, in my opinion, has just been buffed. And then we should look at 556 in one other comparison. Note on, uh, or five, one other note on, on 760 by 51, looking at the pen values, there will be zero ammo that's gonna guarantee a hit one hit pen through level six armor. Because even M993 is at 70, level 6 will be at 60, so it needs to be at 75 or higher to guarantee a hit and pen through level 6. So it could, it's probably going to be buffing the armor to make it so it's at least a 2-tap through everything level 6. Let's scroll down a little bit to 762 by 54 r because that's going to be the bigger contender. Yeah, it's going to be the same with that, because um, BS, the last round there, will not guarantee a hit, uh, one hit pen through level 6 either at 70. Once again, it'll, it'll need to be at 75 so those level six plates will be a bit more worth it if you will because none of these will will be one tap and it's interesting no to note that the 762r has a less bullet velocity than the m993 so your 762 by 51 caliber is going to be doing more damage at range or higher chance of penning at range rather so if you're wanting to pen in level four armor with five four five bp is going to be the bare minimum with the new armor changes or no sorry really just iglonic is going to be the, the bare minimum because even bs is going to be just one lower than 15 higher that you'll need on a level four plate which but pvbs is lackluster especially at range because it's already got low flesh damage you'll be able to potentially pen what you're hitting more but it's going to take more rounds to kill but because of the, like the the bullet velocity it'll be more consistent at range and then bt is going to be the standard to now hit flesh and pen flesh because flesh has a base pen value of 20 so if you want to make sure that you pen flesh on the first round you're going to need bt which is readily available pretty early well, no, the, 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 the flesh 
You don't need to have the 15 higher on the flesh, just the armor. I'm assuming that it works the same. I'm assuming that you need to have the 15 extra to guarantee your pin. Unless I... I'm you just looking the, into that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that 15 extra is just on the armor. Just scroll up to the uh, one above this. Armor effective durability. And then, and then so it says head, forearm, shoulder, calf, and thigh hitboxes now have a threshold value of 20. So perhaps... But this, the sentence above that... Uh, now the body hitbox is always penetrated if the round's penetration power stats higher than the hitbox penetration threshold. So anything over 20 should still go through soft body parts. I think it's just the armor that uh, has that additional need of 15 more pen above whatever the armor value is. So anything in 545 over T. For tracer rounds, yeah. So FMJ will pen your, the soft parts of your body, um, but anything but, below you, you, that is going to be pretty US, garbage. SP, PRS, and HP that do a lot of flesh damage won't guarantee pens through body parts. So perhaps a nerf to scav ammo here? You should see a lot less one taps from scavs at range that hit you through an arm, go straight get straight through and hit you into the torso with this change, I'd assume. All right, guys, we're just going to run the Unheard Edition trailer here for you guys if you guys haven't seen it. And thank you guys for watching the video. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy this content, and we'll see you on the next one.